Welcome back to class. Um, in the first two lectures this week, you saw me kind of talk a little bit about um, how to draw on the canvas, canvas coordinates, things like that. Scott then did a very nice example where he went into a fair bit of detail about doing string processing. In particular, he built some functions that converted decimal numbers into dollars and cents. That's actually a very useful skill for doing your uh, stopwatch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just take that Scott's method and actually just turn it into an interactive application. I'm going to add an input field where you can enter a number and then we're going to actually print that number out on the canvas in terms of dollars and cents. I'm going to try to do this in one take. If I mess up, I'll just keep going. You can kind of see my thought processes as I go through actually building this application. So let's take a crack at it. So let's build an interactive application out of Scott's code. So the first thing you should do when you're working with anybody else's code is just take a couple of minutes to look it over and make sure you understand what it's doing. So here what we see is we've Scott's built two functions. There's a function convert and a function convert units. Um, I think the key one here is convert. It says it converts some floating point number into XX dollars and YY cents. So if you see down below here where he's got some test calls, he's taking this floating point number and trying to treat him kind of the two digits to the right of the decimal point as being cents, and then the whole part corresponds to dollars. So let's just run it to make sure it works, and it looks like it's working here. So notice it takes this floating point number and converts it into a string. So let's go through and just start building an interactive application. Now what would that application look like? What I want to do is I want to open a frame up, and in that frame I want to draw on the canvas this XX dollars and YY cents. But where do I get the number from? I'm going to add an input field that lets me enter that decimal number, and then I'll automatically draw that number over on the canvas as a dollar and cent form. So let's just see if we can do that. So the first thing is I'm going to get a little working space here. So let's go through and kill the test code off. We'll do our own testing a little bit later on. And the second thing is Scott has his functions here. Let's use a feature called code folding. I'm going to click right outside statement two, and it's going to fold up the body of convert units. I'm going to click here outside nine. It's going to fold up the body of convert. So now we can start writing our own code. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to kind of enter in some comments first to kind of guide me in terms of what I want to do, and then I'll fill in the, the rest of the code kind of a little bit at a time. So the first thing is, what is this going to be? This is going to be an interactive application to convert a float into dollars and cents. All right, um, how can we do that? Well, we have our two helper functions here. Now, for our application, we're going to need, after the helper functions, we're going to need to do define, I guess, a draw handler. We'll certainly need that. We're also going to need to define an input field handler. We're going to need to create a frame. We're going to need to register the event handlers. And the final thing we're going to do is we're going to need to start the frame. So let's do the things we kind of know how to do very easily first. Let's go ahead and create the frame and start it. So we'll say frame is equal to simple GUI dot create frame. We'll call it, let's call it converter. And let's say the width, let's make the width 300 by 200. And then what do we need to do? Well, let's start the frame up to make sure everything's okay. So we'll say frame dot start. And let's just run that real quick to make sure I didn't make any silly mistakes. So it looks like I did. Same simple GUI is not defined. That's a classic mistake. What do I need to do? I need to go up here and say import simple GUI. So notice I test it very quickly. It's always a good idea to make sure the code you have is working or not far from a working version. So if it stops working, you know exactly where you introduced the error. All right, let's test it again. Ah. Another silly mistake. Let's test it again. All right, a little bit better. Got our frame open. Um, let's see, it's 300 pixels by 200 pixels. That's good. All right, let's consider what do we need to do next. Let's see if we can get something drawing in the, on the canvas. We're not going to do the input field just less. So let's, let's just try to just draw something on the canvas, make sure that's working, and then we'll kind of build the rest of the program. So let's see. So let's go back and let's define the draw handler. We'll call it draw, 
and let's see it takes a canvas and what do we want to draw well I love to say hello so let's say draw text we'll draw hello and let's put it at what the heck 100 100 and make the font size 24 and make the color white and then what do you need to do? Well, we need to register the draw handler. So we can down here say frame dot set draw handler. Give it draw. So I'll just run that and see if I did a good job of getting it up. So looks good. We have hello being drawn in the middle of our canvas. So what next? Well, we could do one of two things, I guess. We could, um, I guess we could add an input field here and start trying to kind of read in a number and then print that number. But let's, let's just take that, break that into two steps. Let's go a little simpler. Let's define kind of a constant value we want to draw in the middle of the canvas and kind of get that working with Scott's code. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll add it in an input field that actually modifies that value. So I'm going to break that task into two simpler tasks. So I'm going to go through and define a global value. Let's just say value, and we'll say it's, I don't know, $3.12, And let's go through and get that drawing inside the draw handler. So how could I do that? I could take value, turn that into a string, and I think I would get 3.12 drawn on the canvas. Let's try that and see what happens. Good, good, good. Okay, so value is a number. I stored it in a global variable, and now I've actually converted into a string and drawn it on the canvas. Now there was a reason I made it a global variable. It just wasn't because I wanted to make everything be a global variable. It's because I'm going to use that global variable now inside the input handler, and I'm going to actually essentially convert whatever I read into the value for that global variable. So let's go through now and actually go through and, and do kind of the next step is let's go ahead and put the input, go ahead and put in the thing that actually gives us the, uh, the number we want to draw. So let's say define input handler. What does it take? It's given some text. And what do we need to do? We want to take that text and we want to convert it into a floating point number that we could then draw out on the canvas. So we could say maybe value is equal to float of the text. So if we give something that looks like a floating point number, float will convert into a floating point number. I notice there's one thing we need to do here because float is a global variable, we need to say global value because we're going to actually assign to it and try to change it. Hmm. Oh yeah, one more thing. We need to actually go through and register that handler. So let's say frame dot add input. Oh, you know what? Let's just go look in the docs and see what parameters it takes. I always mess this up. So let's be a little proactive here and go. So here we are. Control objects. Add an input field. What does it want? It wants a label. It wants the input handler, and it wants a width. I think I can do that. So let's go down here. What's the label? Let's say enter value. The handler is going to be input. Handler. The width, let's make it 100. Check our code over real quick. I think that's good. Let's try that and see what happens. Ah, what did I miss up here? It says define input handler. Um, oh, what did I do? I said define. Now usually I make my classical mistake of forgetting this colon here, but I'll tell you a little trick about how I always remember the colon. I had a colonoscopy a year ago, and I can guarantee you that after you've had a colonoscopy, you will never forget the colon. So if you think that was corny, just remember that joke and you remember the colon too. All right, let's go back and finish this off here. So I'm going to run this. Okay, looking good. Hold your breath. Let's type in a value. Let's type in 1.11, hit enter. Excellent. Let's try it a couple more, maybe 0 0.01, enter. Okay, we're actually getting very close here because now we just need to rely on Scott. Let's go up here and look. 
I have a value. I think it's in the way it's in the form that Scott expects. I just convert it into a string. But Scott has this very nice function that kind of converts it into dollars and cents. So let's just crank it out and see what it does. So let's say convert. We're going to run it. And actually, surprisingly successful. We see three dollars and twelve something. It kind of kind of ran off the canvas. So what we really need to do is just kind of pretty this up and then do a little more testing to make sure it works. So let's go ahead and get it prettied up and then we'll do a few more test cases to make sure things are working correctly. So let's go through and probably what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to increase the size of the canvas. Let's make it 400. And let's also maybe move things over to the right a little bit, maybe 60. And I'd like, I thought it was a little too high. Let's make it down, move it down. So let's just adjust a few of those numbers and see what we get. Oh, look at that. $3.12 sits right on the dot. So I like the way that's laid out. So let's just do a few more tests to make sure everything is fine. So let's go through and just put in, say, I don't know. Let's put in 0 0.10. Ah, what am I doing? I don't need to change that, do I? No, 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 no. What's the whole point? How do I test it? Well, let's go and just run the program. Okay, let's go down here. How can we change it? Don't change the constant there. We can change it in here. We can say 0 0.10. 10 cents. Looks good. Um, let's do 10.32. Looks good. Let's do um, 7.00. We're just testing Scott's out more. So here's what you can see. You've kind of seen kind of an overview of how I built this application here. And it's, uh, it's not too hard. The critical thing is to be patient, be systematic, test as you go. If you screw up, just stop, think for a second, back up to where it was working, go over the steps that you just did. There's probably an error where you just in, you introduced something that made the program not work. Um, it's really not that hard to get this going. And this is really almost what you're going to be doing in your stopwatch projects. So, I'll see you back in a little bit and I'll give you a little more, a little more of a walkthrough about doing stopwatch, but I think this is kind of enough to get you going fairly well on doing the mini project. See you in a bit.